I'm Shanaz Ayub and I'm on the hunt for the best halal food up and down the country. So having written a book about Indian food, I can tell you that when it comes to this cuisine, I am always on a personal culinary voyage of discovery. But the food that I taste back home is very different to how it's evolved in the UK. And I'm told here that if you want something distinctly authentic, then this is the place to eat. If you want spice on and off the plate, this place has been hailed the culinary ambassador of Indian food, so I'm told, but I'm here to see it for myself. Welcome to Disham. So here we are at the world famous Disham restaurant at King's Cross today and I feel very very lucky and privileged to be in the company of executive head chef Navid Nasir. I'm so Hello, pleased to have you today you. and I know how busy you are and I know how incredibly hectic your schedule is. You've taken time out to show us some of your culinary skills and secrets that have made this place such an, an amazingly successful establishment. And thank you so much. That's really kind words. And <laughs> it's my pleasure to be here on the show and show you some of our dishes. Right. So what are we starting off with We today? are starting with a classic Nihari from Avad. So there are a lot of versions of Nihari. The oh, one yes. we're doing today is from north of India, from right. present day Lucknow. Yes. When in older days, it was called Avad. Yes, that's so right. Avad. Let me start with introduction of the ingredients we have here and then we can get going. So we have dry rose petals, mm -hmm. fennel seeds, peppercorns, cardamom, cloves, cinnamon, bay leaf. We have the gram flour uh, powder. We have the elaichi and javitri, which is um, mace. mace and cardamom powder That's mixed right. together in equal proportion. We have the garam masala, salt, garlic paste, ginger paste, red chili powder, turmeric. We have some water, which will go into the oil to temper it. We have the mustard oil, which is another speciality of this Nihari. Oh, we have the yogurt, yes, and we have the lamb stock, which is pre-prepared. There are so many ingredients that it go is. into this, of course. And I have uncovered the rose water, the kevra water, and the right, saffron so water. Not much to remember, in not case much you're to remember. This <laughs> We're making the Nihari with, with the lamb shanks. So okay, so we've got. We some have the lamb shanks here, and we have the lamb shanks which are boned out. So we have the boneless lamb shank. What I do is I normally put a proportion of one third boneless meat in it, right, which gives a nice consistency to the final dish. Okay. The, the bone gives a nice strength to the dish and the boneless gives a nice meaty texture in the final dish. Right, it works okay. really well together. So the first thing which goes in is the... Uh, Your mustard oil. Mustard oil. Just a bit. Well, we're cooking a lot so you can see how much meat we have. So we're cooking about 9 to 10 kilo of lamb today. And of course, so don't forget there is a lot of fat that comes off the lamb as well. as well. So what we'll do is you'll see in, towards the end of the process, we'll skim some fat out. Yeah. So you can skim it out. But you, for Indian food, you need to brown a lot of masala. Yes, of and course. And for that you need fat. It's all part of the technique. It is. It's all about caramelizing yes. the, the spices yeah. and the onions and everything. Absolutely. So in the meantime, as the oil gets a bit hot, we'll make the pot leaf. So oh, Yari right. has okay. a mix of spices which goes in the mix. What we usually do is we add it in a, in a cloth so that we don't have to take it out later on because these are very nice, flavorful spices. But what you don't want to... And you're just using a normal muslin cloth for this? Yes, correct. So uh, I have to say, Nafi, oh. this is uh, really funny actually, because my mother makes the Hyderabadi version of Nahari at home, uh -huh. which, uh, and she has these portlies that are brought over from Hyderabad, correct. and these very suspicious looking bags that but have full of aroma. In Hyderabad, they, they make the portlies slightly differently. So if you if you if you're in Hyderabad, you actually make a potli with a lot of other ingredients which goes in it. There is something called patar ke pool. Yes, patar ke pool. Um, yeah. Pan ke jar, which yes. goes in it. So there, yeah. Hyderabad Nihari, I must say, is very different to this version. Yes. Um, it's a more of a breakfast dish yeah. than this one, which is more of a meal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every meal you have in the shoe, we feed a kid back home. Really? Yeah. So till date, we're very proud to, to say that we started, I think, back in 1314. And we have fed almost 4 million kids till date. Oh my gosh, yeah. mashallah, that is incredible. Really proud of that, yeah. And we that, actually, I think, is that's God's way of giving you back the success that your 
giving think, to charity. I think you're right. You know? It does, it's it all does karma. come back. It does come back. What I want you to do now, Shinaz, is to step away. Because what we're going to do now is slightly dangerous. And I would recommend the viewers not to actually do this because this is a bit of a method which you need real skill and, and training and experience to do. So this is a hot smoking oil. We will temper it by sprinkling water which has a little bit of ginger garlic and salt in it. And you'll see the color of the oil changing. I have to say, if you're putting water in hot oil, that's, that's an incredibly it. brave it thing is, to do. It is. Next goes in onions. I have my ore here. <laughs> <laughs> well done. So if you ever need a job, we, no, no, we, have, we to, have a vacancy. I would love to. <laughs> I was born to stir onions all my life. I love that smell. That smell just makes me salivate. I think onions are such an illegal part of oh. Indian cooking as well. Do you just well. know your home when you smell them? <laughs> so we'll let these onions go slightly browner, almost golden and then we'll add the meat to it. There are a lot of onion which goes in it, channels, unlike the Hyderabadi biryani. So this is the onion onion based gravy. Yeah. Uh, back home we use the Bombay onions. I really love Bombay onions because they are slightly less pungent yeah. and uh, less sweet as well. Are these just regular onions that you've These used are Spanish onions you're using. The Spanish, Spanish onions, onions are, yes. are the best um, substitute to yeah. the Indian onions. They have a real sweetness they about have. them, don't yeah. they? The sweet thing so, changes its flavour, particularly when you cook it in mustard oil. The mustard oil is really key part of this entire recipe. I think mustard oil gives very sticky flavour to the end dish. A nutty dish, a did. nutty flavour. Right. And you start adding your spices to it, that adds to the density okay. of that flavour. It also carries the, the, the entire flavour profile really well. Yes. Uh, because does. oil otherwise by the end of the cooking process loses its identity. Yeah. It becomes just a fat. That's so right. So mustard oil kind of carries its robustness it does. right to the end. Yeah. So we'll turn the heat down before I get to the next part of the story and put the meat in before the onion gets So now you're going to brown the, uh, the lamb. That's it. Did you see the onions turn brown? So yeah. We don't want them to go black, otherwise you get a bitterness, bitterness in it. So you've, uh, they're nicely caramelized. That's going to add a real sweetness. We're just searing the meat here. That's it. Then how long does this usually take to cook? So Nihari could take anywhere between two to three hours, depending on the quality of meat. Yeah. But the prep takes a lot of time. For example, the stock, we boil the stock for at least 12 hours for it to be nice and gelatinous. So a good Nihari would take anywhere from 24 hours to uh, eight hours, depending on how it's much a, prep a, you do. So this you need a lot of patience You need for. a lot of patience and love. But it's worth the wait. So this is your garlic and, and ginger. ginger. Now this is not a paste from a jar. This is your This is a bread. freshly it's made, It's the only yes. way to make it, absolutely. There's a lot going in there. There's a lot. <laughs> I always tell people that don't shy away when you add ginger and garlic. Yeah, yeah. You need to be a little bit brave when you cook dishes. Yeah. And I think ginger and garlic is one thing. Obviously you can't go overboard with anything. Uh, everything needs to be balanced, but ginger and garlic is again one thing which pretty much every single Indian dish starts with. With onion. We'll let it simmer for literally a few more minutes and then what will happen is we will layer this with onions. Okay. Okay, we'll be layered on top and then we'll be left for 10 minutes for it to sweat. And then we'll mix it all and leave it to cook. I'm loving the smell no. coming from so nice, this, isn't I it? Have to say. So the portly goes in next. We add the next batch of onions. The salt goes on top of it. Red chili powder and turmeric that's it we'll leave it for five minutes now for the onions to sweat and then we will mix all of it together okay so we're not stirring it at this stage not at this stage so we'll so lower the heat it. now this has been cooking for about half an hour so far yes and it's uh, starting to catch at the bottom slightly which is always the secret of every yes. curry i make it must catch at the bottom just uh, just a bit just make sure it's not burned it started to yeah, it started to get a little bit flavor. It would but it's a dish which would need time to, to develop. But you'll see the end result will be fairly good. Okay, so we leave it here and then we'll come back to it. So Shana, you can see that onions are now almost melted and the oil has separated. So then time to add yogurt to it. So after this, what we will do is once we cook the yogurt, we will add the stock. 
and this needs further cooking from there onwards. So the stock you're adding is the lamb stock. Is the lamb stock. Yes. And what have you done to achieve that lamb stock? So Just in boiling the bones? You need or? loads and loads of bone. What I basically do is I blanch the bones first so that you get this come out from the bones. And then you leave in, I say, a 20th proportion of water. So if you have one kilo of bones, I add 20 liters of water to it. And I normally add a couple of bay leaves okay. and maybe a few garlic cloves in it. And that's it. Right, okay. And, uh, I think it needs more time, so you can see the yogurt is still visible. Yeah. One, once it gets completely amalgamated with the other spices, you'll see the yogurt does. Oh, the yogurt's given it that lovely yeah. tanginess yeah. and depth and consistency. It brings everything together. At every stage that you've cooked this, it has tasted wonderful. So Thank I can't you. imagine what the final result is going to be. It's ready. You can see the yogurt is nice and properly cooked and we will add the stock in it now. You can see the stock is nice and gelatinous. So this will give this dish the body it needs. And you know the good Nihari is stickier. Of course, yeah. So this is where the stickiness comes from, the gelatinous comes from. And you can see how it's almost changed the texture as well. It's become not and almost given it that look of Nihari <laughs> that we all know Started so well. Now look like a Nihari. Dishum, I have to tell you, I am very, very excited right now. You can never get enough of these on a plate when they're served in a restaurant. We're talking about spicy lamb chops. And these ones at Dishum are apparently yes. to die for. And here we have a chef, the executive chef of uh, Dishum restaurant. And he's going to demonstrate the magic behind the mm. chops here. Apparently they're very, very popular. Well, I must tell you, Shana, this is my favourite dish. Is it? One of my favourite dishes. I mean, <laughs> it's let, automatically let's be, let's mine. I've not this even tasted one it. One of my favourite dishes. My favourite <laughs> dish is actually dal, but I love these chops. I have to uh, say, I'm sold already. They are. They look beautiful. Them. Let me introduce again to the ingredients we have here. We have the black pepper powder, ginger paste, garlic paste. We have the raw papaya. Now, this is something which is interesting because this acts as a tenderizer. Of course. And it's a, it's a taste neutral dish, yeah. uh, ingredient. So, if you can buy this, it's very really useful. If you're especially making it at a very short notice, it is very interesting. People usually go for the powdered version of it to act as the and tenderizer. Fresh, the fresh is Nothing useful. like fresh. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Lime juice. We have the fresh red chilies, fresh green chilies. This is kasuri methi. Um, Fenugreek. Greek. This is the cumin powder. We have the garam masala here. Oil, yogurt. Again, more ginger paste, garlic paste. We have the chaat masala. Salt. Chaat masala. Yes, right. and the red chilli powder. And of course, you've got lovely <coughs> fresh coriander. coriander. Yes, lovely. That's it. The garam masala, the chaat masala. These are. This is your own concoction. Correct. So, so the obviously it's going to taste different. Garam masala is masalas. really important again in the cooking, and yeah. um, this is one ingredient which is key. It's really difficult to get the balance right with garam masala. To it know is. exactly what to add of which proportion to achieve that and the, taste. The one which you buy on the shelf is never. No, Never good enough. absolutely. Remember I would always encourage people, roast it, grind it and have it at home That's in your it. store cupboard. So we do the first plantation now. Now over here, that looks like you've used the French trimmed. We did. Um, the reason is, when you cook it on a grill, if you have the fat on the bone, it gets rendered burn yes. as well. And I think that gives a bit nice char sometimes, but also it, if it, it burns badly, then it doesn't give a nice taste to the, the finished dish. You know, it has so to be charred really well. Yeah. When you go for the French trimmed, that's where the meat is scraped from the end of the rib bones, uh -huh. which looks super impressive on the plate. It does. But equally, you know, you get different kinds of lamb chops, don't you? You get them coming from the rib, from the loin, from the sirloin as well. And of course you get the shoulder chops as well, okay. which are the backbone or the blade chops. That's correct. And they're usually a cheaper cut, but they're a lot more tender. They're a cheaper cut, but there's not enough meat in them. And if you're buying lamb chops, you, you expect them to be nice and meaty and have nice eye um, of, the, of the rib. So if anyone's going to their butchers and asking for the cut of lamb that you've got here, they're asking for the French trim. Best end where the, French trim. Yeah, where the meat's been scraped from the ends of the rib bones and it ends up looking like yes. that. Absolutely. That's first marination done. This will go in the fridge for a couple of hours. I would recommend the first marination stays for a couple of hours yeah. and then we do the second marination. So we'll keep it in the fridge and we'll come back to it. We're at our second stage of marination now.
This is how it looks like when it comes out. The chili mix with coriander looks like this. So yogurt gives a nice creaminess to the marinade which is required for the chops because chops have the fat trimmings at the back yes. of it but the meat is quite dry and, you've and you don't want it to go drier color. than that. You've really achieved that colour as well without having to add any food colouring. I'm a real disbeliever of food oh, colouring. I really I, think to be that with you, this if you one can avoid it, I, you must always I really avoid don't it. like it. I don't know why people use it because there's no need for that. Not if you use a good quality chilli or a Kashmiri chilli powder, you get a nice bright colour as you can see here. I think I am going to be a little bit we will brave. We taste it, yes. I am going to be brave and just taste a little bit here. So this is the masala that is going to go onto the lamb chop. Ay caramba. Mm. <laughs> that is delicious. Nice. Has a nice kick to it. It's, it's it definitely a kick. That's a walloping kick. Right, so we are ready. Our chops are in the fridge with the first marination for almost two hours now. We take them out. We'll add the next stage of marinade to it. to marinate ideally as long as possible if you leave them overnight you get the best results oh, of course but if you are slightly start press at time i think make sure you give them a couple of hours at least right the first marination is very important i think the yeah, first yeah. marination needs a little bit of time because you need the tenderizer to work and you need to make sure that each chop gets nicely coated with the masala <laughs> so you can see the right. the chops are nicely coated Wonderful. they are going back in the fridge for an overnight marination if you can possibly do but we're not doing that today obviously no. so we will cook them in in, in say a couple of hours. So Naveed, these chops have been marinating now for a while. Yes. What you said was that the longer obviously they marinate, the tastier they the are. meat becomes. And we have got the tenderizer there as well from the papaya, so they should be Secretly very succulent and feet. juicy. I can't wait. Right, so the next day is we skewer them before we get to cook them. So, Naveed, how long will these take to cook then? Now, you see the chops are on the grill and to cook them, it will take about nine minutes. I'm not going to lie, I feel like I'm on the grill. <laughs> it is intensely hot here. It is intensely here. hot. And these are your lava stones, aren't these they? These are. This, this is one of the silver brown grills. This, this is called Roboto grill. And this gives the nice intense heat so that you get a nice char. The meat doesn't dry out that quickly. Right. It keeps, uh, so the, it keeps the tenderness inside. That's and you want Correct. to achieve uh, medium rare? You want to achieve a pinkness well, inside? We don't have that in Indian cooking, to be honest with you. We don't have the rare. Or, we don't we keep the, the, the lamb chop from inside nice and tender. That's the intention. But some people do prefer it to be nice rare. I like it slightly rare. pinkish inside, I have to say. That's fair. Well, I've had an amazing time here at Disham where culinary genius Chef Naveed has demonstrated his skill with two sumptuous dishes. Join me again here next week when he'll be whipping up Lucknow Biryani. I can't wait. But until then, salams from all of us here 